Elohim and made an atonement for the children of Israel. This is Nick Vandalay. This person, this end time servant, will, will have a covenant of peace made with him. And that messenger is the end time messenger of Isaiah 28. He's the messenger back to Ephraim, sending a message out to Ephraim, the Ephraimites, because he's the son of Joseph. He's sending a message in, in Isaiah so 28. So the son of man. We read that this person is too tall to fit the bed. The sheep. Nick, you're a pretty tall guy. You probably can't fit the bed either. Are too short to wrap himself fully in. He speaks with the. Too short to wrap himself in. Stammer, stammering lips. We he read with that the person is too tall to fit the bed. The sheep are too short to wrap himself fully in. He speaks with a stammer, stammering lips. So wrap yourself fully in. Speak with a stammer. He's speaking with another. The sheep are too short to wrap himself fully in. Right, so he speaks with a stammer. Stammer. So far, there's just three different um, requirements. Lips. He's speaking in another language, not Hebrew. And his message is the Ten Commandments. Line upon line, that's two. Line upon line, that's four. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Here a little, that's nine. And there a little, that's... Uh, so Nick Vandalay is, he's not campaigning that he's Elijah because he makes it very clear that in the beginning of his videos, he's letting you know that uh, Elijah won't be campaigning to be Elijah. So, but if you're signaling that you are that person then what I do is I I just pay attention more to what that person is saying and in everything that that person is saying about their interpretation of Elijah they're actually because it here's what it is everybody knows the Bible inside and out except for me and I'm sure a lot of the people, but the ones that are already that already have this um, script, get the script. Everybody already knows what they're doing, the role that they're in, and and I don't know because I don't I don't know the Bible inside and out. I haven't spent my entire life studying it. I uh, really only picked it up in jail back in 2004 and then started reading it then. So the, the way the thing is, is there's a, he, Nick, at first I was confused, but then I'm starting to catch on. Nick is talking about Master Yeshua, Messiah as in a person that is like God in the flesh. And then his son would be the, the Elijah type that's to come. And so the way that he'll give you the information as to who he's saying he is representing is simply just like, like that. And then you go from there. So once you know that there's a person out there that not only is assuming who he's assuming, but was actually promised. I believe Nick was promised that position. Now, it could have been just by a spirit telling him in his spirit, like giving him promises. Or it could have actually been who he's saying is the Elohim or a... Who he's saying that Master Yeshua Messiah is. Basically God in the flesh. So, but the reality is, God is really a spirit. Like, God sends his son, and his son is the one that has the message. And so that's what Nick is doing right now, is he's accepting being a son of 
the Father that's in heaven that rules heaven, like literally. And but there's also the other 143,999 that are possibly like playing the same role. I've always wondered, like, why does this person act like he's Paul? And if this one's acting like Peter, and then, but then it's it's reverse. It's like this one can be that one. The son could be mistaken as the the father because Jesus, two thousand years ago, representing. Master Yeshua Messiah that Nick says, which would be God in heaven because after his death, then his spirit went up to the Father, and then he, him and the Father were one. So that's how Christ, the first coming, was the Son of God. The first, the first half, and then the second half is is the David servant type is what I'm learning. So the David type is also the Elijah type. And and Elijah apparently is also going to be tall. He's not going to be able to fit in his bed. He's going to have a short... Um, well, he won't even be able to wrap or he'd wrap in in a, with the sheet and, and something else but what I learned from Nick is that there's a lot of there's a lot of characteristics of who they're expecting and I've come to the conclusion that Nick would be When I watch Jacob Israel, Jacob Israel has eyes to see. When I watch Derek Bros, Derek Bros has eyes to see. When I watch Nick, Nick, I used to be trolled by a Nick. Nick and Jamie the Wabbit, those two guys, are characters. But Nick, as the son, he's a, he's he's saying inadvertently. He's not saying he's Elijah. He's not saying that at all. And as soon as I see, I, I did a test today at work. It was a um, hide and seek test, and because you know how like. No matter where you're at, you're being surveilled. So I did a, um, I did a test, and then I actually got the result that I needed to confirm the test, the reality of the test. And because here's the thing, we're all being watched, right? You think you're not? Well, you are. You're at work. What are you doing? Well, you're being you're being watched. Who's watching you, though? You could be just paranoid, thinking that, and it's just nobody. Uh, but it could be, it could actually be somebody, and that's like mainly what their job is to do. So, uh, when you look for a confirmation to see how much can how much can be viewed and then when you get your confirmation it's perfect and my confirmation for Nick Vanderlei is that he was definitely promised in his head by a source that he is going to um, Bear the way before me, and Yahweh, whom you shall see, shall suddenly come into his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, 
whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and full of soap, and he shall sit as a refiner, a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering of righteousness. Because if anybody, if anybody is lost, and they're in this um, thing, and they don't have eyes to see, but they do because they can actually surveil you, and because they've given they've been given the power to do that too, because that's how you that's how you um, copy the people that are actually just. naturally things occur and so there's the ability to be behind the scenes to be able to see what happens with people and so you can see a lot you can see everything but there is one that's lost there's one and and that one would definitely have to be somebody that doesn't truly believe that their dad could do that to them and give it away to like an adoption of like the same way that Joseph adopted uh, Jesus because it wasn't really his kid because in the spiritual realm that wasn't really his that was that was God's the father's the, the mindset but it was still his child because he took care of it and um, and so be, Mary being used for the first time had that child and it, it just developed out of being a spiritual awakening. That's why he was called the man-child. Because he was, a, he was already a man. And then that spirit, the child of God, the spirit, was in him. So there is, there is somebody that is like a son of man. Because not of born of a woman the blood and water but the son of man so the son of man I always look at it like there's always an, there's always a in the place of character somewhere on the um, in the social media platform there's in the place of like there's people that are they're there They're there in the place of somebody. And there's actors, and they know it too. They just know that that's what they're, they're acting. I, I'm not the one acting though. I'm not, it's just, but now it's like it's turning into an act. The whole world's end of the Bible prophecy is being played out and when you envision that it already happened 2,000 years ago and then this is the vision that fails because as Nick says Master Yeshua Messiah he's putting that that name into a, into a physical human being saying that that person is here in the flesh but that person already was in the flesh and died and ascended to the Father. So the second coming, it's the only one that's in the flesh is the is the Elijah type, because Elijah Elijah uh, does come first and then Christ. But at the same time, Elijah has it's the same spirit 
that Christ has too. It's just Christ was always known as stiff. With like no personality and always pissed off. It's just not even realistic. Like who's like that? But, but, but because how I, how I see it is the end, the end time servant that Nick is talking about is really somebody that his father is that of Christ that already died 2,000 years ago and ascended up to the Father and became one and now that spirit is one and it delivers the Holy Spirit. So that's it's kind of why the Trinity thing is like that and why it's interpreted that way. And so the servant when you hear Master Yeshua Messiah, that's really would just be God, the Spirit in heaven, and don't attach a man to it. That way you don't get deceived, because if you attach a human being to that, you'll look at that human being as God. And then that human being will say to you, uh, yeah, you're you're my son. Like, here's the, the, the person playing God on earth. Whoever that person is will go to, to Jesus and say, yeah, you're Jesus. Of course you're Jesus. But you're my son. I'm from heaven. I'm, I'm actually your father. And it could be through, it could literally be true. Like it could be the person was actually created through a woman, but you know, like the person's mother and, and a guy had the baby. But the spirit, like how do you get the spirit inside of a person from birth? How do you know that's going to happen if you were created? But regardless, the servant is, is just that. It's the, it's the same as the David type because he was feeding his flock and he's by himself feeding his feeding his flock because that's the way he likes it to be left alone for the most part and and then they picked him he, he was just minding his own business over there but the guy that they picked first was probably this tall muscular type good, very handsome good looking man uh, military looking guy because that's what fits the protocol, just like Christ with the with the long hair and the and the you know the the stereotype of what Christ looks like walking around with a robe on. What is he? Is he Hugh Hefner? But that again, like the, I'm trying to get to the point of the servant itself is a person that they know they're going to pick the person. But first they pick the son of disobedience, the one that's lost. Because there's only one person that's lost. And if I can pinpoint one person out of anybody that I've ever come across on YouTube that, that well, there's more than just one that's... But there's people that can see. And even though they can see, like they might not still like you, but they can still see. And that's the thing. That's why they would want to kill you because they... They see that you see, and it pisses them off. And then the ones that can't see, like at all, well, they're lost. And then the ones that can see are the ones that need to see, because that was the whole point. And then they hire people to play their role, because they're playing a role. And because this is a, because Christ already fulfilled these things 2,000 years ago, and ascended up to the Father and became the, this the spirit in heaven the father in heaven that's what he became and then the second coming would be a person that is just a person and will not accept worship from another man or woman will not accept anybody worshiping him and will not worship anybody else because that's the medium level grounded the way it is 
there's messengers. Yeah. Okay, everybody wants to be the first messenger instead of the second. Well, if you're the second messenger, then move over and let the first one take take the, the, the place. Why do people want to be worshipped anyway? You, you just run the planet. Like, what? what's the point? You run the planet and you can do anything you want ever and always have. And, I mean, now you'd rather do nothing else other than what you're doing now and you can do whatever you want in, in the world and you always have been able to do that from birth but this is what you want to do so why would why would they want to be worshipped as God it's like if you're the first messenger and you can get the message across to people and that's going to change that person's mind that person tells that person and they all collaborate together and then then you you get a group of people that that have their minds changed and they have like this authority on the on this world well then if you can get a message across to the people that run the planet my message would be to just share what you got and stop playing games and just everybody stop lying and stop trying to get people to perceive what that interpretation is even though you know it's the wrong one or it's the wrong one for that person it might be the right one for that one over there because Bible verses it's not that it's wrong it's just wrongly misinterpreted because you'll see one thing and you'll see another and another like no well that one has to be right well no that one's right for that group that one's right for this group and that one's right for the ones that are the first fruits because they're last like we're at the end we're at the beginning of sorrows for who and what what are the sorrows and for who are they for so the mistake is going to be when somebody accepts that time I say these things I'm adjusting the camera I'm not even signaling because it's not me I'm not not the one that's doing it but I am being accused of it behind the scenes even though I never heard it because nobody ever said anything but it's what it's just what happens when everybody shares then we'll we won't have the the issues in the world They'll, they'll dwindle away. There's still the reality is there's still people that are never going to learn anything. But the quality of life. So if I can help change the quality of life on the, this planet, well then that's what I've been trying to do. Is it working? Well, who knows? Because who knows? And what does it really matter? And who does it matter to? So that person that's going to accept worship as the sun is going to be the one that's lost. Now, what about Judas? Because... It's like Judas knew Jesus, or at least he knew who they were saying he was. I think it's more like that. Judas knew who Jesus was, but he didn't really believe in his ability because he he wasn't higher up on the chain where he was able to see further. And so he wasn't able to see it, and then that's why he uh, took the 30 shekels. And then afterwards, afterwards he spilled his guts. But was that the son of disobedience? Or was it somebody else? I got, I'm still, I never really heard anybody talk about that. Or I don't really remember. I don't know one way or another. 
but the person that has that mindset like yeah all right i'll be worshiped i already know who the guy is that runs the up there so yeah i'm sure you're my dad i don't care maybe you really are And that would be the person that thinks that they're getting the, because they were promised, they, they think that they're getting the reward. And is anybody even going to get the reward? Like it doesn't even seem like it's ever going to end. It has to end some point. Like how long does this have to keep going on for? I can tell that there wasn't a decision made publicly because the ones that I that I watch on YouTube haven't given me that um, haven't given me that uh, that thought that that actually happened. Because of the way that they still talk about things to come. And that's why, with uh, what Nick was saying earlier about this two-stick prophecy, and then the stick becoming one, and then the two grow into one, that, that they, they needed an interpreter for that. I forget where it was at, where he said it at. But in the end, the Elijah type is going to be coming with the, uh, the stick in his hand. He is blessed. Him. The man. The man is blessed is what he was saying. So he's going to come with the stick in his hand. There's your interpretation. Two grow into one. It's like two sides of seeds. Like seeds are seeds is what makes a tree grow. So when the seed is planted, then the tree grows. And then it has it branches off to you know different branches. About two videos ago, there are Canaanites in the house of Yahweh. They are claiming to be See there's just too many names. I'm hearing Yahqua, I Elohim, uh Master Yeshua, Messiah, Yahushua, Yahshua, and he and and Nick actually says all those names, I believe. So that's the part that's kind of confusing. Like, well, wait a minute, who's he talking about? And that might be the purpose of it. And then you just have to try to decipher through it. And the only way that I can try to comprehend it is that he's using God. As somebody put in the flesh which would be like his father that he would accept and then he would be the son and then as the as the Messiah there so was Nick Vandalay promised that he was the Messiah because his father told him or is there somebody else that is also a son of somebody they were told the same thing kind of like your Jesus from Nazareth but, in other words, I think it's more like claiming to be the son of Jesus. That's what I think it is. As if, like, well, Jesus already came. You know, the Master Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua Messiah, that Nick says. Jesus already came, and he's already here reigning, and that would be his son. Because, you know, things continue on. Why did we, we stopped here, but... Jesus had a son. And and then but the reality is the person that is playing the uh, that part would just wouldn't that just really be Satan? And then the fall and then Satan has a bunch of people playing him. And then he even has 144 that are that are playing the role of it's like all this happens by God orchestrating it through Satan, his creation, in order to for it to go full circle. 
where that's how the truth is finally known because Satan is the one that uh, seen it. And then Satan gets cast, the old serpent, he gets cast out. Because Satan is inside of every human being, your mindset. Once you wake up, once you finally wake up and you have Christ, the Spirit, inside of you, you're now battling with your flesh, which is just purely demonic. Like, it, it's always l lurking and, like, it's lusting after things. And you have to, your mind, ha you have to be the one to decide not to. Don't feel bad because you have those thoughts because they're just injected in your head because that's who your other side is, your enemy. That's why you deny your flesh as much as you possibly can. And when you can't, you can't. And if it's sinful, well then ask to be re repent and don't do it. Ask for forgiveness in your head to God that's in the spirit, that's in the spirit. Ask that way. You can go into the closet if you want to pray. Or if you want your privacy, you can go into the closet. You can shut the door if you want. But as soon as that happens, just expect some just expect something. Because privacy isn't really something that we have on this planet. And but people that watch you, they do some sinful things. And so as they watch, you know, people could be surveilling like writing things down like scribes scribes it's not like they're prophets they're just they're writers so whatever you're reading if you can understand it then that helps and I've been trying to understand things for a while now there's some confusing things but I thank God for people like Nick because I'm able to learn more from directly from him uh, not campaigning to be Elijah because Elijah's not going to do that inadvertently maybe but not not blatantly just indirectly he will be campaigning to be that person and then so that person is the is the David type but he also needs to be like a lineage of David, like King David himself. It's just weird that my boss's name is David. I've known him for like 20 years. And um, ah, he owns a lot of property in Philadelphia. The top Masonic type of a, um, community, Philadelphia. And uh, he does build.